Let's see how we can run Merlin examples in Google Colab. And we will start with the Merlin models tutorial track. So this is a great set of examples to get started with the Merlin framework. It walks you through how to process your data using NVTabular, uh, how you can integrate your processing pipelines with Merlin models, and then ultimately how you can how we can train deep learning models and also traditional machine learning models on your data that you pre-processed in the earlier steps. So uh, let me pull up Google Colab here and uh, let's see, there we go. Google Colab, it's opening, right? And this is the window that you'll see when you navigate to Google Colab and we can go to the GitHub tab on top. Now you don't have to give uh, Colab the permission to use your to access your private repositories and so on. Uh, you can cancel out of it. And all you have to do is you have to point to the example that, uh, to the notebook on GitHub that you'd like to run. There we go. And I pressed enter. Okay, so it actually opened up the repository. Uh, let's access the first notebook in the series. Beautiful, and it now opened on Google Colab. But uh, since this is an example, um, like all of our examples that can be accelerated on the GPU, let's, uh, let's switch to that uh, runtime. So we have to go to the runtime tab and then uh, change runtime, runtime type. Uh, by default, you will not be assigned an accelerator. You will not be assigned a GPU. But uh, if you just open this drop-down menu and navigate to GPU and then press save, this will uh, switch the environment type to one using a GPU. All right, so uh, all our examples are self-contained and let me tell you, let me show you what I need by this. So let me run all of the code. Okay, this notebook was not authored by Google. But yes, let's run it anyway. And uh, this will run all the examples in all the cells in sequence. But will it actually work? Well, unfortunately not. There is an ingredient that we're missing. And let me show you. Uh, yes, uh, Merlin is not default by is not installed by default on Google Colab. So let's see how we can get the Merlin framework. Uh, installed on, in the Google Colab environment. Before we can run the Merlin examples, we need to install uh, the Merlin framework on Google Colab. And I'll include a link to this, um, to this uh, blog post uh, in the description of the video, uh, like, uh, just like to all the other examples and uh, you know, that we'll be using for this tutorial. Um, but uh, this is the piece of code that you need to run. So this um, um, blog post walks you through how to uh, actually do what I'm showing you on video right now. Uh, and uh, we can grab this uh, code from the blog post. I just hope that on the video I'm able to provide you a bit more background and uh, maybe this material will be easier to follow. Um, not sure, providing it for your convenience. Uh, so let's do this here. Let us restart our runtime. Okay, are you sure you want to restart the runtime? Yes, because we started to import uh, the Merlin framework and it should generally be okay. We should still be just fine if we install um, the uh, libraries and try to rerun without restarting the environment, but it's much better to actually have a clean start. Okay, and now I'm pressing Control Enter, and it will first pull a script from my uh, Rapid's uh, colleagues. And now that uh, Rapid is pip installable, um, essentially we can uh, install it very, very easily without too much hassle. Okay, so what's going on here? It told us that your instance has the right kind of GPU, a Tesla T4. Right, because with a Google Colab instance, 
you can actually get an instance that has a GPU that is too old that will not support uh, Rapids and by extension that will not uh, support uh, the entirety of the Merlin framework. Okay, so things are installing. Uh, we're now downloading uh, um, some of the libraries that uh, the Merlin framework relies on. And uh, while this is going, uh, let me maybe tell you what you will not be able to run on Google Colab. And that, for example, is uh, the Triton Inference Server. Triton Inference Server is a very advanced piece of machinery that allows you to serve deep learning models extremely efficiently. Uh, it has uh, features such as dynamic batching, uh, so the work that you would normally have to do implementing an API endpoint for your model, this has been done by the NVIDIA team and uh, uh, you know it's highly optimized for the purpose that it was developed. Uh, and here on Google Colab, you cannot run your own server, right? Uh, how, how would it work? Uh, so this is just one uh, small part of the Merlin framework or, well, um, I suppose uh, Triton is not part of the Merlin framework, but is uh, a tool that the Merlin framework plays really nicely with. So uh, you will not be able to run examples from Merlin systems. Merlin systems is a Merlin library that takes uh, Merlin models, so that takes models that you can train using the Merlin models library uh, and uh, that serves them to the world. Uh, and you can not only serve the models, but you can also serve the pipelines so that you have exactly the same pre-processing pipelines in test uh, or essentially in production as you used in train. This is of extreme importance. Okay, so the Merlin framework finished installing on Google Colab and again, all we had to do was to just run the code that we copied over, essentially just execute this uh, single cell and maybe go grab a quick coffee and we're back in business. So let's see uh, what we can do now. Okay, so let's uh, proceed with the tutorial. And in this tutorial, we're covering uh, some basic data pre-processing uh, techniques, but uh, using the GPU. Okay, now why am I unable to run this uh, on Google Colab? It's a different key combination for executing multiple cells that I know of. So right, you have to go Control Shift Enter. Mm, and this is what I mean when I say that our examples are self-contained. So um, essentially, if you have all the libraries installed that you need to run our examples, the examples themselves will look after getting the data for you. So um, we imported uh, Merlin models and Merlin data sets uh, in the cell that I just executed. And now let's run the subsequent cell. And here you see that we ran the get movie lens uh, function. And this is what uh, downloaded for us, um, what downloaded for us um, the movie lens variant uh, with one million um, ratings in the dataset. So just for background, movie lens is a great, uh, well-known Rexus dataset. It comes from this free uh, website where users can go and rate the movies. And uh, the objective in many of the tutorials will be to predict uh, how a user will likely experience a new movie, whether they will like it, whether they will not like it, based on their history. Okay, um, so now let's uh, run the remaining examples. And uh, here we are uh, already jumping to training a model. So take a look at how little code is required to uh, create a you know, modern, uh, advanced, uh, uh, deep learning uh, Rexus model. Uh, so here we will be using, okay, why is this not defined? I probably did something wrong here. Okay, there we go. So uh, I'm not sure if I ran that cell, uh, but uh, the data downloaded now uh, or is downloading now and we should be good to go here in just a second. Mm, so what we'll get from get movie lens will be a Merlin data set. So it's uh, essentially a, an intelligent wrapper around a tabular data set that can help us with uh, moving our data 
onto the GPU for running pre-processing steps, for training, um, help us to make uh, efficient use of our resources so that we don't run out of the very precious um, GPU memory. Okay, let's now run this cell right here. Right, uh, and moving on to creating the model. Uh, <laughs> what, is, what is happening here? Unexpected end of file while parsing. So we must have uh, a, a, an issue somewhere here, which is a little bit peculiar because um, what could have happened here? Okay, may, maybe there is a difference if you press uh, Control Shift Enter and Control Enter on Google Colab. Uh, I'm not that familiar with uh, Google Colab. And, but that uh, might be it. Let's see if our model will train. If our model will train, then it means that everything uh, up until this point has been uh, executed correctly. And uh, this is exactly what we're seeing here. So we see the model is training for a single epoch, the loss is decreasing, the uh, preci precision and recall are improving. Uh, so that's what we'd like to see. Mm, lovely. And uh, let's wait for the model to finish training. And now we can evaluate the model on unseen uh, data during training on the validation set. Uh, and I pressed, uh, I pressed Control Shift Enter again, but this time the cell executed correctly. Uh, so I'm not really sure what happened earlier on in this tutorial. Uh, just a bit of. Uh, magic uh, must have transpired okay uh, and now let's take a look at the metrics returned during the evaluation so we see the um, scores from several um, several uh, popular metrics uh, for tracking the um, performance of uh, rex's models reported here and uh, now the the training of the model was only minimal it was only to show that you know this is how you train the model but uh, it, it was just a single, <coughs> excuse me, just a single epoch, and the hyperparameters were not tuned in any way. Mm. So we can't really expect the uh, validation results to be great. But um, actually, this is a great exercise if you'd like to maybe uh, play with this yourself and see what performance you can attain on the movie lens dataset uh, using the. Uh, deep learning uh, recommendation model architecture, then um, yeah, this should be a fun way of getting your feet wet with a with this uh, Rexis uh, uh, architecture. As you can see, there are many things you can train. So on one hand, you get very concise code that will do that will bootstrap the model for you, that will construct the model, that does the training. But uh, you're also uh, more than welcome to start diving deeper into these parameters. And if based on the results on your validation set, you see that your model is overfitting, you have several knobs that you can tune. Um, you can tune how many layers are there in the bottom block, uh, bottom um, MLP block, in the top MLP block, um, the top multi-layer percepton block. You can. Uh, also change the size of the embeddings uh, for uh, users and for movies that the model is um, that the model is um, training and uh, right uh, so um, here we have a bit of a write up of what we did in this tutorial and uh, that's it we are done with the first tutorial in the track so let's see there are many tutorials here there are seven tutorials here right now and we have a bunch of use cases that you will be able to run. But uh, the important bit is that uh, the second example, uh, it um, relies on the data that we um, downloaded and that we processed in the first tutorial. So uh, now if we'd like to run the second example, here are the steps that uh, we need to take. So first of all, uh, we need to open the other example here in here on Colab. Let's uh, let's do that. Uh, let's uh, let's open a new example. No, that's not that's not what we want to do. Uh, we probably want to open a notebook. Yes, we want to open a notebook. 
Again, I'm not um, authorizing Colab to access my private repositories. And I'm only saying, hey, please open this Merlin notebook. But uh, when we do this, uh, it's um, quite interesting. Because when we do this, Colab will uh, restart, will essentially create a new runtime environment for the new notebook. So we have to again go to change runtime type, we have uh, so to select GPU, we have to save. Okay, and now it should be doing its magic. But remember that um, once we connect a new runtime, we will have to follow the steps again for installing the Merlin framework. The, sorry, the Merlin framework. Um, I try to improve uh, with those tongue twisters in general with my pronunciation going forward so that hopefully these uh, tutorials are easier for you to follow. Right, so too many sessions, too many sessions. Let's uh, kill one of the earlier session here. And that's where we run our uh, previous notebook, the first one in the tutorial track. And now we can uh, begin running uh, this notebook uh, that we opened. So it's a subsequent notebook in the Merlin model tutorial track and we will be looking at uh, pre-processing data with NVTabular, preparing it for training. So we will probably generate some features, here's the explanation on the integration, uh, how it all works and uh, uh, yes, uh, here we are uh, generating the data set. So uh, um, this is um, this is actually this is actually a different uh, scenario because we're not actually using the data set from the previous tutorial. Well, um, all right. Uh, still, uh, let me maybe show you. Let me maybe show you um, that this still works, and uh, I will I will then run you through the third tutorial in the series. And the third tutorial, the third tutorial for exploring various um, model architectures, the third tutorial will load the data that is on disk. Will no, it will use synthetic data. Ha! Huh. So that's not a very good way of showing this functionality. That's interesting. That is very interesting. So let's do something else. Let's do something else. Let me let me let me interrupt the interrupt the execution. I'm interrupting the execution. <sighs> it's not easy to interrupt Google call up once it starts doing its thing. Quite sad. Okay, let's restart the runtime. Now it restarted and the important bit is whether we will see the files from the previous run. And I bet that we will. Yes, you see, so the sample data is right here. And the sample data was generated from the previous notebook. Lovely. Sample data. There we go. <laughs> okay. Okay. Some data. Why is there sample data here? That's not. Okay, so let me now show you how we can run the subsequent example in the tutorial track. So we executed the getting started example and now we are ready to run the uh, Merlin models uh, and, and Vitabular integration example. And that's a very interesting tutorial because it will show us how NVTabular integrates with Merlin models and how we can leverage NVTabular to pre-process our data with uh, GPU speeds and using some of the um, very um, specialized uh, pre-processing operators that uh, have been crafted specifically 
for running on tabular data and uh, uh, many of them have been developed uh, in collaboration with the NVIDIA KGMON team. So, uh, you know, this is a really, really powerful uh, functionality. Right, so uh, let's see how we can run this notebook. Okay, so we again uh, go to File, Open Notebook. And from here, we, um, we have to go to the GitHub tab, actually, because uh, if you haven't run the notebook before, it will not open up on the recent tab. Uh, which is what I have showing uh, right here. So we go to GitHub. We again will not allow Colab uh, access our private repositories. And instead, we will just ask it to open the uh, second tutorial. Okay, so uh, what happens in the background is uh, Google Colab creates a new environment for us, a new runtime. So uh, now if I will want to run cells in this new environment, um, you know, uh, it will, as you see, it's connecting to the environment and it will initialize a blank environment for us. Uh, so the, the problem is that uh, it again defaults to running on the CPU. So we have to go to runtime, we have to go to change runtime type, and we have to pick GPU as the hardware accelerator to use. Now, if we run the cell, uh, any cell, uh, it will again uh, reinitialize the environment and um, hopefully connect us to one with a GPU. But uh, what will happen is uh, that uh, the environment will be reset. The environment will be reset. So it's still thinking. Normally it thinks uh, a little bit faster, uh, but it's still thinking. And what it should ask us to do is it should ask us whether we want to um, turn off the previous environment that it has running in the background for us. Oh, Google call up. Why are you busy? Why are you busy? That's uh, that's not uh, what uh, should be happening here. Don't you want to make this tutorial happen? Come on, Google. It's uh, it's a useful tutorial. So let's uh, let's see if we can if we can get it done. Well, um, maybe let's try restarting the runtime and let's see if this will do the trick for us. So if you see, if you encounter a problem where um, Colab just hangs there, um, doesn't want to create a new environment for you, the solution is to restart the environment. Okay, beautiful. And now let's run the first cell. Okay, and we are running with a GPU. So what happened here is our files that we downloaded in the previous notebook uh, and then we processed and potentially wrote to disk, they would still be living here. So we don't lose the files uh, when we recreate in an environment, uh, right? So we downloaded the Rapids AI CSP utils back in the previous notebook and it's still here. So it uh, is preserved across environment restarts. But is it true also for the installed libraries? Let's see. So I'm trying to run the libraries or specifically I'm trying to import multiple libraries. And of course, uh, OS, Pandas, uh, that will be part of the um, Colab environment by default. But we see that the other uh, libraries that we installed are also there. So we're off to the races, we are all good to go, and we can just execute the cells, uh, you know, step through them. Um, if I were learning, if I were trying to understand the framework, I would not run all the cells like I'm doing here. I would be stepping through uh, each of the cells and uh, trying to maybe see what the train uh, variable holds, um, understand what the generate data function is doing, um, but uh, right, so this should get you up and running with many of our examples. Uh, I will uh, link to the Merlin model track that I suggest that you start with, and uh, I will also link to this uh, Merlin uh, on uh, Google Colab um, blog post that contains this very precious cell uh, with code that you have to execute if uh, 
um, running on Google Colab for the first time. Right, so we see that that this is this is looking good here. Mm, all right, uh, thank you so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful. I have many tutorials like this one coming, so please like and subscribe uh, to see more of them. Uh, see you around. Thank you so much for watching.